Hello, this week we're at Hay Country Park near Wigan in Lancashire and we're getting ready hopefully to drive down to Brinklow Marina for the first Electrica boat show. What a nightmare. Just had a call from Anthony at half past seven this morning. He's in work, stayed over in the camper van last night. He's gone to go to the gym to get ready for work and the camper van, he thinks the gearbox has gone. He's managed to limp the van back to work. But now what do we do? It's Thursday. We're supposed to be at Electrica at Brinklow Marina on Friday and Saturday. We were going to set off about um, seven in the morning, eight in the morning. So he's stuck at work. If he calls Green Flag, they'll probably take him to the local garage. But then how does he get back to the boat? Because that's over an hour away. Normally, in these circumstances, an emergency like this, I'd probably get a car rental. But I can't drive because I can't see a thing out of this eye and I've got weak vision in this eye. We're a bit stuck, really. Loads of people have already offered to put us up at Brinklow, which is really nice. So a big thank you to Pete and Caroline uh, and Russell and Helen. I'm Professor Pat Pending and Pete and Caroline on One Day More Aboard. <sighs> what do we do? Poor Anthony's stuck in work, wondering what to do for the best. I've said call Green Flag, get to a local garage and then get an Uber back to his parents or get a hire car. Oh, watch this space. We love it here. We actually had our civil partnership at Hay Hall and Dexter loves exploring the local woods. Tell you what, people are amazing, aren't they? We've had three or four of our boaty friends saying we could stay on their boat if we get down to Brinklow. We've had viewers offering to pick us up from Liverpool and take us all the way down to Brinklow, even if we want to take Dexter, which is just amazing. And Anthony's now arranged for Green Flag to do a temporary fix on his van. He's then going to take the van to Apley Bridge, which is about 20 minutes from where the boat is at Hay Hall. Our friend John is going to meet him at Apley Bridge, run him to Wigan, where Anthony's arranged to pick up a car from Enterprise, I think. Come back to the boat, and then we'll set off early in the morning to bring Chloe. So yeah, fingers crossed. It looks like the van's going to get sorted. It looks like we can make it down to Electrica at bring Chloe, so we're really pleased about that. Not sure if we're going to leave Dexter at my mum and dad's or take him down to Electrica, because uh, yeah, it's, it's really slowing down and we don't want to be dragging him around a field. <laughs> Um, but yeah, thank you to everybody that's offered help. We really appreciate it. Pete and Caroline even offered to drive up to Erlen. <sighs> Just such fabulous friends. We dropped extra off at my mum and dad's and we were soon on our way to Brinklow Marina. Oh yeah, right over the bridge. Oh no, thought you got lost. Got your trough in and Greg's pasty. No. <laughs> you love being filmed while you're eating. But our Greg's pasty and we got some crisps. They look nice. Organised by Automarine, Electrica is the first boat show of its kind dedicated to electric narrowboats and electric propulsion. The two day event was being held at Brinklow Marina. There were plenty of suppliers to see and plenty of people to talk to. It was great to chat to electric boat owners and find out what their consumption was like and how their boats were performing during the winter and the summer. It was good to see such a good turnout for the first day, even though the weather wasn't fantastic. This two day event was held just before the Crick Boat Show and we're hoping that it's going to be repeated every year. <laughs> You can even book an eco-friendly narrowboat holiday. There's a growing number of systems available now for electric narrowboats. Oh, did you hear? Hi, hi, I'm and it was interesting to listen to some of the talks. We were invited along to do the opening ceremony for this new super fast charger from Rolex. Hey. Hey. There were some fabulous boats to look around and I really did like this boat from Mothership Marine. All of our boats are made from reclaimed timber. Okay, so these fold down to make beds like that. You slide them up. The storage underneath 
and that when you um, put them all down, there's these holes in the floor here, you can put in um, either a dining room table or a base for the bed, right. and then you've got um, a king, well, what is it, an emperor size, a yeah. party size yeah. bed, as, um, as, as one commentator <laughs> said. There were some really good ideas on this boat, including this TV that swivelled and mounted out of the way. And I loved the ribbed ceiling to make the boat look even longer than it is. And how cool are these doors? What a great feature that. Let's... And then push it a little bit more to push it home, that's it. Yeah. And in the bathroom, we love the look of this sink. And these beds fold up against the wall during the day, and with a simple touch of a button, they lower down to make a large bed. I won't go all the way because I'll have to move yeah. the, um, the things. This lets so much light in through the roof, and you can put a bung there during the night. And we just love some of the other touches, including this lamp. Despite the weather, the barbecue went ahead and there was evening entertainment. And our accommodation for the night was Narrowboat Tethys, thanks to Nigel and Sue. The next day after a good night's sleep, we're invited onto David and Stuart's electric boat for a cup of coffee. Well, the sun's out and that's really good news for all that solar. And it was still really good to see that supercharger being used. One thing you'll notice about electric narrowboats is masses of solar panels. And that's the great thing about narrowboats, they've got a really large roof space. Time for another boat tour. Hi, my name's Mel Wood. Um, I'm owner of Hunky Dory, which is a serial hybrid narrowboat. We launched on 4th of August, 2020. We live aboard. We have a Fisher Panda Victron setup with Life PO4 batteries. Uh, they are 600 amp hour and a 48 volt boat. Being electric, we've got, I would arguably say, virtually every gadget you could have. Everything that you can have in a house we have on this boat. Um, it works perfectly well and we're very happy with it. Hunky Dory has nearly two kilowatts of solar, a similar setup to ours, and there are lots of storage solutions and lots of drawers, which is exactly what you want living on a narrowboat. With a full size electric hide and slide oven from Neff, with an induction hob, and a few of the electric boats had these cooker taps, which gives you hot and cold water, but also instant boiling water. with an L-shaped sofa in the saloon, and also this, an incinerator toilet, and a modern sink. But this is what really sold this boat to us. It was a little day cabin, and it was just like sitting in a conservatory. It was lovely. We've got an Ingyro motor on our boat, and we spoke to the supplier, Josh, and asked him how Lightning Craft started. Ah, oh, yeah, so, I founded Lightning Craft about four years ago after I was uh, doing a, a diesel engine out um, service work on an old fishing boat on the coast. Um, and I really didn't want to be doing many more of these particularly labour intensive, quite grubby work. Uh, so I started questioning what sort of technology changes were coming to the marine industry. And there was already some movement in the outboard uh, sector with Torquedo coming through. Um, and so I, I set off on a, a sort of electric quest, if you like, an odyssey, uh, to, to search for a suitable motor candidate for uh, electric conversions. And it took about a year, and then I finally found my now business partner, um, who uh, we went into business together, and we've come up with a a, a marinized industrial electric motor solution for for the marine sector and we do both um, coastal work and inland sectors so that was a kind of um, foundation of lightning craft and since then we've gone on to produce a range of products um, to serve a range of vessels really mm -hmm. and we've got an engineer motor on our boat. Could you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, so the Enduro motors are part of a large family of um, permanent magnet AC machines that come from Enduro, which is from Germany. And my business partner um, is the UK and Ireland importer for uh, for Enduro and our control systems, which is Sevcom. Um, so that business is Volksport, and we act as a, as a sort of marine wing, if you like, for that business. And uh, and it's yeah it works quite well really and so the enduro motor you've got in Morning Star 
is a 10, we call it a DD10, and that's simply a direct drive, mm -hmm. because it's a large enough motor to um, be coupled directly to the prop shaft without a reduction belt or gearbox system, which some um, systems uh, and manufacturers offer. So that's simply allowed because it's it's big enough and it's got the torque to do that, mm -hmm. um, which means we eliminate moving components and complexity of systems. I'm Jane, I'm from Akronara Boats and this is our latest boat build, it's Speedy Whip It 2, it's 68 and a half feet, so I'll just show you through. So this is a washing dryer and on this side we've got the fridge, there's going to be quite a lot of wine on this boat. And we've got a lovely slide in bin, keep everything, all your rubbish out the way. And under here, another place to keep your wine. <laughs> it's in traditional boat building, you know, boaters <laughs> like a lot of wine on yeah. their boat. We use more wine than fuel. So. Yeah, more wine than fuel. <laughs> so have got a nice oven, nice oven. And then over here, we love this, it's an induction hob. Mm -hmm. Um, nice big full induction hob like you'd have at home mm -hmm. and wherever we can we put lots of storage so you know we've got plenty of drawers for storage and we've got a nice big whirly gig keeps all your pots and pans in I mean you've got as much storage here as you would have at home really I can't see that you've got any less no. but you just have to have your essentials in yeah. you're not gonna create you're not gonna collect clutter in here you just want it nice and smooth and like minimalist it looks great I don't know if you've seen up here but we've got these Houdini hatches adds quite a lot of extra light to the boat Useful. nice sunny day yeah. today so yeah. you can see all that extra light yeah. over here we've got a dinette and um, this is quite common on boats, Pullman dinette, but on ours it's extra special because it's an extendable. So I'll just show you how that works. This one pulls out and another one pulls out where you're stood and we put cushions on so then this can sit six to eight people. Um, and then the table also has an extending section and we put the table on there. So you fit lots of people on here and you could have a really nice gathering, a social gathering of people. The table is electric, so we press a button and then that all reduces down to the same level and we've got cushions and all the cushions come out and it makes a huge double bed for your guests. So that's a nice little gadget. Yeah. That's really popular with our boat builds as well. And should we go further back? Yeah. yeah. So we're into the sort of saloon area now. I'll show you that we've got um, a freezer on board as well. We pull out this drawer. And there you go, extra storage, extra food. And wherever we can, we put storage and shelves. So we've got a nice bookshelf here and the TV unit as well. Beautiful TV unit, all carpentry made by our really talented joiners. Um, so loads of extra storage there. The bed also becomes, this settee also becomes a bed. So you could actually sleep another four people in here if you wanted. And we've got another Houdini hatch here. Really adds lots of light into this room, makes it lovely. Oh, so I'll just film this by you. Sorry, diesel reflex. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot to say. <laughs> One of the nice features. Yeah. So, this is the second cabin. So, guests would normally stop in this room for the owners. Um, and this can become like a full double. So, we pull this section out and then, oh, that's as far as it goes. And then we've got an extra mattress there, which we just put on top and then you make the bed up. So it still gives you a space to walk if you want, but it'll give you the full bed. And that's a really nice space for guests because you'll see through in the main cabin that uh, they can get out of there. So you can actually leave people privately if you want. Nice size bathroom. <laughs> nice sink. Beautiful shower. And cassette toilet. A toilet? No, it's not. It's like a pump out. A toilet. pump out toilet. Yeah, sorry, pump out toilet. Thank you. And then I'll let you just come through here. Yeah. And then this is the the master bedroom, I would call it. Really nice, great big bed. Really comfortable. Lots of light coming in again. 
we've got storage in all the bedrooms we've got quite a lot of wardrobes in the bedrooms but this is one of my favorite features over here it's where there's a hatch and there's all these steps and then under all the steps we've got um, storage so literally every step's got storage and I think that's one of my favorite features of this boat because it's just it looks so beautiful and it's so practical too before we left, we just had time to chat to Chris on his electric narrowboat, Electra. Can yes. you tell us about your the length of your boat and the uh, batteries? Yes, and it's the... a 62 foot uh, narrowboat with lithium batteries. It's got a water cooled motor. Uh, it's got a cocooned generator, which is reasonably quiet. Mm -hmm. um, and but when you're act actually moving along. You don't use the generator normally, and then it's pretty much silent. Mm -hmm. uh, the boat was built by Chris Smith of Smithwood Narrowboats, and they did a lovely job. Yeah. Washing dryer in there, fridge in there, uh, freezer under here. And one thing I discovered when I was planning the boat was that you can have drawers under your kitchen cabinets mm -hmm. so all that extra storage space the saloon has a large comfy sofa and this i'm so jealous a home cinema so it has full surround sound with a subwoofer and everything and even has a small office shower room bathroom oh, yeah beautiful bathroom Get out of your way the bathroom comes with a composting toilet from Compost and a very modern sleek looking bathroom. And a comfy looking bed with gas struts and plenty of storage underneath. Is it a parallel hybrid? It's or? a serial hybrid so that means that the prop can't be driven by the, the engine, mm -hmm. the, the generator engine. That just charges the batteries um, and then the, the motor which is a Belmarine motor that drives the prop. So if you were on a river, you could have the generator running to keep the batteries charged whilst you're using the motor. Mm -hmm. uh, but most of the time you don't need to do that. Ask Chris roughly how long a tank of diesel would last. A tank lasts about a month in the winter. Mm -hmm. And it, a tank fuel for me is just under 300 uh, litres. Oh, wow. uh, and then in the summer, it lasts about three months. Wow. Yeah. So because it's used for the heating mm -hmm. and the uh, electricity pr production. Yeah. So you're gas free? Yes, gas free, yeah. no stove. Mm -hmm. um, and that was all deliberate. Yeah. Just so that I got one thing I need to worry about. I only ever need to go and get diesel. I can even take water from the canal because I have a, a water freedom system that filters the canal water. Right. Uh, so, uh, and I have a composting loo. So I don't need to go anywhere to pump the toilet tank out or anything. Mm -hmm. So the only thing I ever need to go and get is diesel. Being at Electrica this weekend has opened our eyes because there are a lot of boats and it's good to see that people are embracing this new technology. Do you think it is the way forward I and mean, you'll see more and more electric boats on the canals? I think it's a step in the right direction mm -hmm. to going forwards, yeah. yeah. I think, I think it's... It's important to remember that we're, we're in this transitional phase, so it's very difficult to say this is the way it's going or this is what's happening. Um, and I think I'd be sceptical of people who do say that. Yeah. But it's, it's, very, it's very interesting to see, as I said, this weekend at Electrica, because it's sort of a gathering of um, similar businesses yeah. and people. Yeah. Um, but it's going to be the first of many for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There are a lot of people that think going electric, it's all a fad and electric cars and uh, you're better off sticking to diesel. What, what do you say to people who... That's a really interesting one. So because I have two hats, if you like, and I see the, the offshore yeah. side and then the inland side, one thing I'm dead certain on is that the inland market is ready for going electric. Mm -hmm. uh, and bear in mind, when you say going electric, there's, off, there's, there's, there's um, hybrid options. So yeah. when you say go electric, it's not about, well, what if your battery dies? Well, your battery might die after a day of cruising. What do you do? Well, you plug in. So mm -hmm. there it is, there's an answer. Or you have a diesel generator that you might start two hours before you finish your cruise. So your batteries are charged 
and you've cruised you know for, for most of the day on electric it's about this there's it, it, a lot of engineering solutions involved and I think people should not um, jump to quick assumptions because there's a whole bank of information that is being figured out in real time in some cases and or is very complicated so there's a kind of deeper understanding people need to have around the topic because I don't think there's one solution or one answer for, for any single person's cruising uh, ambitions or vessels so it's very it's a very complex situation uh, sort of complex topic that requires a more sort of thought through answer I think I don't know if that's answered the question but rambled off a bit no there. no that was excellent and if people want to find out more about lightning craft how do they do that so we've got a website um, that's just had a, a facelift so that should look um, a bit fresher if for those that have perhaps seen it already um, go and have a look at it again because uh, it'll look slightly different um, we'll be at Crick uh, an unusual position which is not in the propulsion section uh, bizarrely we're uh, the other way um, which is quite fun we're on the top of the quay side there we'll have a big tent and lots of sort of area and space to come and talk about projects boats electric even if you're not wanting to convert to electric come and have a conversation because maybe we can help you in another way um, in a in a boat optimization way or just come and have a look at what we've been up to uh, in the past year since Crick uh, and where we plan on going because it's certainly exciting. Later than planned we set off back to pick Dextrop from the mum and dads. Oh, what a weekend! We nearly got hit side on by a van that jumped the red traffic lights at Haydock Island as we got onto the motorway yesterday. We're on our way home, we're about halfway home, we get a flat tyre. We've called the RAC, they're going to be here in about 30 minutes. It's going to be a late night I think. <laughs> but we really enjoyed Electrica, so big thank you to Paul and Kay, everyone that organised Electrica, everyone at um, Brinklow Marina and also uh, Pete and Caroline for looking after us with food and Phil and also Nigel and Sue for putting us up on their boat. The Baltic community is just amazing, thank you. The tyre's ripped, so we're not going to get any air in it or a puncture repair. We're going to have to get a new tyre, so he's now calling a mobile tyre fitter, getting a price and getting him to come out to us. Poor Dexter, he's still at my mum and dad's, and my poor mum and dad are waiting up for us. Oh, how are you feeling? Really tired, I just want to get home to Dexter. We don't know how long it's going to take now, do we? No. But the good news is, we've got a mattress topper and a quilt. But we're in a Vauxhall course, so there's nowhere to really put it. big thank you to tyres on tarmac i think they're based in wolverhampton or around the area but yeah they were pretty quick at coming out weren't they yeah i'm yeah. super impressed rac were here like relatively quick these guys like really quick as well speedy job back on our way now really really grateful even offered as a packet of crisps yes i wish i'd said <laughs> yeah now all right thanks a lot we're on our way Yay. back home uh, it's now 11 o'clock we're going to be back at my parents at midnight. We should have been there at half past seven. Oh, we need to collect Dexter. We're finally back on the boat. We've got Dexter back from my parents. It's 10 past one in the morning. What an exhausting day, but we've had such an amazing weekend. So nice to get back to the boat. It's cozy. Don't know where Anthony's gone. Well that's it for this week, if you've enjoyed the video don't forget to give it a like and please subscribe, it's completely free and keep your comments coming. See you next time.